everybody, how you doing? This is Valerie, Prophet is Valerie Johnson Hawkins. How are you doing today? God is good. He's worthy to be praised. Welcome, welcome, welcome to my page or to my channel. I don't know if you see me on Facebook. I don't know if you see me on YouTube. But anyway, welcome and thanks for watching. Here we discuss the Word of God. And yes, I take more time doing it because I study and I read. Um, I want to get it. Then all you get, I want you to get a good understanding as to what is being said. And we take what happened in the Bible and give it in today's standard and we relate it back and say, okay, God, let me tell you, Old Testament, New Testament, it all relates today. The Bible is what it is. And it, um, the Bible, one thing that the Bible does do and, uh, and allows us, when it gives us understanding and it gives us knowledge to understand that there is truly nothing new under the sun. There's a lot of thing in the word of God that you can read and you can relate back to. And I just thank God for it. I hope you do too as well. Now, what I want you to do is get your pencil, get a pen, get a piece of paper, get your tablet, get your notebook, get whatever you want to get, and we're going to get into the Word of God. We're going to finish this out. Our key verse in Scripture, what we're trying to get to is verse 25, which talks about how God is going to give us back what was taken from us, you know, um, out of our, uh, from the things that has happened, you know, uh, Jeru Judah and Jerusalem back then. We're not doing what God had told them to do, and they have become rebellious, and so therefore they were getting too far out of hand, and God had to handle them. He had to say, listen, I'm God. I'm not nothing to play with. So we got into that verses 1 through 12, and then we go on to verse 17, and I believe the last time I came before you was in verse 17, talking about how God told them, listen, you got to call on the priests and the ministers to help you get you up out of this. It's not enough to assemble the people. I want you to do that. And render your heart not your garments unto me. So now, let's get into what we need to get into. Five, four, three, two, one. And I'll be back with you. See you in a second. Give you enough time to get everything that you need. So, hey, hey, how y'all doing? <laughs> we are here. God is good and he's worthy to be praised. Father God, in the name of Jesus, before I start, I just want to cover us with the blood. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we want to thank you for all things. We want to first come to you and repent for anything we might have done or might have said that was not like you, oh God, in the name of Jesus. God, we ask you to protect us on the highways and the byways of this life, God, our lineage, our household, oh God, our job, our finances, oh God. We thank you for the provisions that you've already set for us in the name of of Jesus. We thank you for our life, health, and strength. We thank you for coming before us, oh God, and showing your mercy and your grace. We thank you for making a way out of no way. In the name of Jesus, God, everybody that's under my voice coming right now from the top of their head to the soles of their feet. In the name of Jesus, God, we have to bless them with wisdom and understanding and intellect to understand your word, oh God, and how to apply it to their lives in the whole Bible. In the name of Jesus, God, I thank you for all things. God, I thank you for your power, your love, your strength, and your word, oh God. Your word is true in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen, y'all. Those of you, this is your first time watching me. Thank you for watching. Thank you for coming. Thank you for being a part. I take my time. Yes, my videos are a little long, but I, it's so important that a person, all you get, you get a good understanding. And you have to understand how to relate this to, this is my message, how do you relate the word of God to today? And trust me, Old Testament, New Testament, it all relates till today because there's nothing new under the sun. How I got here was God said that he was going to um, restore me. He said, I'm going to give you the years that the canker worm and the palmer worm um, and the locusts have taken from you. And I said, well, let me read about this. You know, how did, how did I get in this place or what happened to cause this? And so I began to read about Israel and Judah and Jerusalem. And um, because I'm a person, you just can't tell me anything. I want to know and I want to, to, if I teach somebody, I want them to get a good understanding and I want them to know how to apply that word because I was a babe, I was a layman in the things of God and people were saying anything and living any kind of way and it just was a mess. So I seek out the truth. I want to know and how to apply it to my daily life and in the, in the place that we are now. So, in the things of God, 
Um, I want to help try to break this down. We are in Joel 2 and 17. The last time that I came to you, I, be, I believe that we talked about the ministers and the priest. And we talked about the ministers and the priests. I found that so fascinating because I, I wanted to bring out different things in the in the book of Joel, in the chapter chapter two in the book of Joel, and how it relates and how powerful the ministers and the priests were. I was I was just as surprised as anybody else when I read it. I, I, I know I read the Bible, but how did I overlook this? How did I not give an understanding? about this and how powerful that they are and how God used them. And at this time, at this particular time, we needed our ministers and we needed our priests to pray and we needed to humble ourselves. So let me set this up for you. One in 12, a one through 12, the book of Joel is, is um, a call to alarm. Why was it a call to alarm? It was a call to alarm because listen, we weren't doing what we were supposed to do. <laughs> you know, um, and God was like, he was like, listen, we begin to take God for granted. We begin to uh, do everything that he told us not to do. You know, we wanted to have it our way, you know. And God was saying, listen, I'm not having it. I'm not having it. You went too far, Judah and Jerusalem. You went too far, my chosen people. You went too far, um, the people of God. You went too, too far, the believers. You are not in a place with God that you should be. And he came in and he's going to check us. You know, um, I have on here the chosen men and women of God were not living according or the requirements to the requirements of God. And after everything that he had done, and it's so easy to forget what God has done when he, it seems like everything is, is going fine. But don't you know that you wouldn't have a life if God didn't allow you to live or to breathe or to move or have the activity and the use of your limbs? If you've ever been some, if you've ever been through something, if you've ever heard those testimonies of people that God has brought back and, and reestablished, you will understand. Listen, we're not here um, by our own might. You know, it, there is a mighty, powerful God that in uh, that is over our lives. And thank God for His Son Jesus. You know, I thank God. For, I thank God for Jesus. I thank God for His only begotten Son. I thank God for the Lord Jesus Christ in my life. And I thank God for be, having to uh, having mercy and grace enough with me to allow me to establish a relationship with him. So when we get into the word of God, it is up to you to sit there, woo-saw, get your pen, get your pencil paper. You should already have it. And we're going to get into this to try to get a good understanding as to what God is saying to us and how can we can re relate it on today's um, times um, and in these last and evil days. Before he destroyed them, he sent out a warning. Before he destroyed them, get your um, get your pens, get your piece of paper. We're open to um, 2 and 17. And we're going to go for the warning. 1 through 12, there was a warning. He said, listen, I'm finna send an army to you. I'm finna uh, come in here. They finna tear you up. <laughs> but I listen. You're doing too much. you way out there. You're doing some stuff that you don't have any business doing. You know, um... I showed my mighty hand. I brought you up out of Egypt. I mean, I fed you. I clothed you. I, I had mercy on you. I, I destroyed the enemies that came before you. And now you still act in rebellion. You're still acting a fool. You still you think you're wise and, be, and became unwise. You became foolish in your action and foolish in your ways. And I have to stop you or I'm going to destroy everything. But I'm going to give you warning comes before destruction and a haughty spirit. What? Before a fall. And I thank God for the warning. I thank God for the tap on the shoulder. I thank God for when he sends the missionaries, the elders, the, the pastors, the, the um, evangelists, the deacon, the deaconess. I thank God for the apostles and the bishops. When he sends us a warning, he says, listen, listen, listen. Don't go in there. Don't do this. You know, you've got to stop what you're doing because you're doing more harm to yourself than good. You're not thinking. You're in your flesh. You let you allow your emotions to override you, to put you in a place and position, and you are positioning yourself against me. And I and, and listen, I'm not having it. I'm a jealous God. I'm not gonna have no other God before me, and especially not you. And I created you, and you are not greater than creator. And I have got to ring your bell, tap you on your shoulder, and knock on your door. And this is what he was saying to them in verses one through twelve. I'm sending an army, they coming in. The, the, and they're going to devour everything. They walk in unison. If you try to destroy them, 
They can't die. They're going to get up if they swallow, if they fall on their own sword. It's not happening like that. They come up the walls. They come in the houses. They come in the, the, the crevices. They come in. They're going to devour. They come like flames of fire. They're devouring everything in their path. And behind them, they're going to leave everything desolate and burnt. Now, listen, that's enough. That's enough for me, you, and anybody else to say, okay, God, you fit to do this? What is going on? So then we go down, and he says, listen, this is what I want you to do. Because now we can ready to receive instructions, how to get right with God, what to do, what he's calling for us to do. He says, listen, in verse 12, he says, listen, this is a call to assembly. Render, render your hearts and not your garments. I don't want your clothes. I don't want your cars. I don't want your houses. I don't want. I don't want none of that. I don't. I don't want your money. I don't want anything. I want your heart. I want your heart, soul, body, and mind. I want you to align up with me. He turns around. He says, "Listen. Get the priests. I mean, he says, get the people. Call the assembly. Get the congregation together, because I'm getting ready to deal with you ever so severely." He says, "Listen. I'm not playing no games. Gather the people. Sanctify the people." Um, even though even the babies, the children, the mothers, the grandmothers, your nieces, your cousins, your grandfathers, your brothers, bring them, even the suckling, he says, bring everybody together, he says, and bring them to a place, and they need to begin to repent, they need to begin to uh, um, come before me, and render their hearts and not their garments, and then he says in verse 17, he says, let the priests and the ministers of the Lord weep between the porch and in the altar. So I took time with that because I was so fascinated by it. I know I didn't read the Bible. I was so fascinated by it that I had to find out what this was talking about. So I go back in Chronicles, Second Chronicles, the 24th chapter, and I begin to read it. And I find out about Jehadiah and Zechariah, his son. And I find out that Jehadiah was a man of God and he um, was a man of God to the king, Joash, and for uh, and he lived for 130 years, and in that time period, Joash became king, and he died while he was still in office. But he forgot about all the good stuff that Joash had did to him, and when he died, his son Zechariah was still here. But the priests of Judea, the, the no, I'm sorry, the princes of Judea came to him. Hey, what's up? What's happening? And he took them for what they were, because they were all. Um, uh, kings, kings, princess, and he took them because they're familiar spirits. He took them because he could look at the, how they dressed. He took them because he saw how they acted, how they spoke, and because they were all basically raised the same because, you know, they're, they're a hierarchy, you know, in this nation. But he did not know their agenda, and they definitely had an agenda when it came to coming up there and speaking to jo Joash, um, and King Joash, I'm sorry. And um, when they did speak to him um, and begin to let, talk to him, he turned away from God and, and began to serve the same gods that they were, you know. And um, God said, I'm not having that. You tripping. You know, I done did too much for you. You know who I am. But he went on familiar spirits. People are always showing up. Come on, somebody. And at, at the time of weakness or whenever you're going through something, here come the devil, Okay. And he, he just listened to him and he began every, all the work that he had did to build up the house of God and there all the, the money and the, um, what would be the uh, gold and they made plates, they did all kind of stuff. And by the time these princes finished dealing with him, he turned against God and began to serve other gods and other images. And when Zechariah, who was Jehadiah's son, um, said, listen, you can't do that. If you want God to move, if you want God to come in and show up and show out um, on your behalf, you cannot do what you're doing. And King Joash got upset and he said, listen, stone him. And they stoned the man of God right there between the porch and the altar. Can you believe that? They had, you know what I mean? They stoned the man of God between the porch and the altar. It always happens. It happens to the men and women of God. You know, they always talking about us, always putting us down, always throwing rocks and hiding their hand. You know, they don't want to listen to us. Think we don't know what we're talking about, you know, so on and so forth. So, but this happened. But let me tell you about uh, Zachariah. He wasn't no punk in him. He said, listen, God, look upon them and visit them. You know, I want them, I want you to deal with them, what they're doing to me because I come in as a man of God and I'm telling them right from wrong and I'm trying to give him advice. I'm trying to let him see 
I see things that you can't see. I, I, God speaks to me. God shows me things. And I'm trying to tell you, I'm a watchman on the wall and you cannot do this. You can't uh, serve uh, uh, two masters. You're going to hate one. And you're going to love the other. You can't serve two gods. You can't go out there and, and be in church sometime and in the world sometimes. You can't have your foot in both places. You have to have a made up mind what God you're going to serve. And he let them know, you know, and he didn't take down. And because of that, they killed him. So we come back over here to um, Joel, the 17th chapter, and we begin to deal with the priests and the ministers and what they need to do. They need to come before God, crying and mourning on our behalf between the porch and the altar, and this is why. I needed to give you some background. So now, here we are. We're in verse 18, y'all. We're in verse 18, and we're going to get this through, and we're going to get it over with, because now we're talking about restoration, what we need to do. Um, in order for God to come in and bless, in order for God to come in and move, in order for God to come in and reestablish himself with us as we now, now that we repent, now that we've rendered our heart and our government, now, now that the priest and the minister have prayed, God says, now I can restore you. Um, so now they did their job, y'all. They interceded for us and they went before God. God heard them. And now God says, I want to restore. He says here in verse 18, then will the Lord... Be, a, be jealous for his land and pity his people. Ye the Lord will answer and say unto his people, Behold, I will send you corn and wine and oil, and ye shall be satisfied therewith, and I will no more make you a reproach among the heathen. Verse 20. And then, now that's important, and then destruction of the enemy. So now God is saying, but I will remove a far off the northern army and will drive them into the barren and desolate place with his face towards the east sea and the hinder. So, you know, I began to look look that up and he talks about um, uh, Gog and Magagod. And this, these were people, uh, this was a people and this was a place that had a vast army. And this army was against God's people and they wanted to kill, steal and destroy and God is saying, I'm not going to allow this army to come upon you. I'm going to send them away. I'm going to send them to the East Sea. I'm going to send them far away from you because you have now repented. You have now stopped sinning. You have now did what I asked you to do. You've rendered your heart and not your garments. The priest and the minister have stood, ah, blah, 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 shah, stood before me with flames of fire and interceded and cried out and mourned. And he says, listen. He said, come up out of that pulpit. Come up out of, come up, stand up. Everybody come together, get on the floor and let the priest and the minister lay hands and cry out. Come on, humble yourself because I want to hear from them. He's out of, he didn't say the pastor. He didn't say the first lady. He didn't say the apostles. He didn't say the bishop. He said, I want to hear from the ministers and I want to hear from the priests. Now, let me just say this because I know somebody is saying, well, we, we all minister. Well, listen, there's ministry. I do minister. But I am not a minister. I have ministered, I'm sorry. I ministered the word of God to somebody. I have a ministry. But some people, just like I'm called to be a prophet and a seer, some people are called just to be a minister. Some people are called just to be a priest in that office because God has specifically ordained them. Come on, somebody. Justify them, approve them, predestinate them, put them in a place with a special anointing to come up against the enemy between the porch and the altar. And I thank God for that special anointing. So now we move on to verses, um, because I'm trying to get to 25. We move on to verses um, 21. He says in verse 21, and it says in minds, and then, because from verse, after we find out what God is going to do, after he tells us what he's going, um, what, what is required of us, then he begins to say, and then. So verse 17, after 17 is 18, he says, and then our uh, restorations, and then the destruction, then the destruction of the enemies. Verse 21, and then 14-fold um, restoration of the land and of the people. So now God has said, I'm not only just going to restore uh, you, but I'm going to restore your land. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Thank you, God. Let me explain some things to you because I I didn't I didn't been through the ringer. I didn't been through some stuff in my life. And I do have a testimony, but I don't want to share it all right now. But let me tell you, have you ever been stripped? Have you ever God has ever laid you on your back? 
I remember that back in the day, the old folks used to say, he'll get you on your back if you don't listen. And let me tell you, he will put you on your back. He'll put you in a place in position where you will listen and you will lose all these worldly possessions that you put before God, all these people that you put before car, cars, jewelry, your looks, come on somebody, your body, men, women, kids, he, you'll lose it all. When God wants to get your attention, when God wants you to act right, when God says, listen, you went too far in your life, when God says, listen, I'm not playing no games with you, I will get your attention any way that I need. How? Kicking and screaming. You're going to come and you're going to mind somebody. And this is the mentality of God because he is our father and we are his children and he has created us and he's created all things that we're not supposed to put graven images, idols, people, places, and things before an almighty God. But God is saying here, because now, now I've gotten your attention and you have repented. And you've rented your heart, not your garments. You've come into assembly together. You've cried out. The ministers have did what they're supposed to do. Now we are in verse 21. And now God says, listen, not only am I going to restore you, like I said in verse 20, and send the army another place and uh, and, and put send them to the east or to the north. I'm not going to allow them to come upon you. But, oh, he said, I'm, he said, far off from you, the northern army, I will drive them to the, a barren and a desolate place with his face toward the east sea and hinder the part and the hinder part toward the uttermost sea. So thank God. Thank God he's not letting that army come this way. Thank God this army don't like God and God's people. Thank God that he's sending them a whole nother way. I thank God for Jesus. I thank God for allowing the enemy to go another direction when I'm acting a fool. I thank God that God did not allow the enemy to come in and kill still and destroy me. I thank God when I didn't know God for myself that I was out there in a rebellious state. I thank God that he did not allow the enemy to come in and take my life and take me over to the place that I place that I was not, I'm not here today, that I wouldn't be here today. I thank God for that. So you have to relate that to yourself. Have you ever been in a place of disobedience and God is trying to get your attention and you rebellious? I'm going to do what I want to do. I'm a, pa I'm a pastor. I'm a, I'm a pastor. I'm a, I'm a prophetess. I'm this. I know what God taught me. Have you ever been there? I know I'm a self-made man. I'm a self-made man. I got money. I got this. And God said, I'm trying to talk to you. You acting crazy and I'm trying to talk to you. I'm trying to tell you something. Your money ain't gonna ain't gonna get you into heaven. Your 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 shaking a preacher's hand and putting money in, in the till ain't gonna get you a place in heaven. I'm trying to talk to you because I need to deal with you because you may not get to heaven, okay? Because you're doing way too much. So when you're doing that, God wants to get your attention. When you're going into a different direction, he wants to get your attention and bring you to a place that he can talk to you, but you must come to a place of repentance. You've got to come to, everybody goes to a desolate time, a desolate place, and you go through this desolate time, you go through this desolate place to really see yourself, to see what you really need, see who your friends, see who your foes, see who your frenemies, see who the haters and the non-motivators are. Everybody goes through that. Now that we uh, now that we have been through that, and God says you're in a place of restoration, not only am I going to restore uh, you, but I'm going to restore um, the people in the land. So I thank God. I thank God for the restoration. And he says, fear not and old land, be glad and rejoice in the Lord and do great things. <clears throat> what does he tell us to do? He says, I want you to do great things. I want you to move. I want you to do great things for me. I want you to do th great things now that you are in a place, now that I can deal with you, now that I can talk with you and you're going to listen and you're going to be obedient. Do I got your attention now? Do I got your attention? Let me tell you something. I think about some of the mothers and and and, and what they used to teach us, uh, you know, about God getting your attention and how God will allow you to get so far and then he, he, he won't, he going to deal with you. You know, and I thank God for the mothers telling us and teaching us that, you know, and, she, and the mother, she's telling all you get, get a good understanding and God wants us to get a good understanding. Now that you've done those things, now that you've come, now that you stop sinning, stop lying, stop perpetrating a fraud, stop being a hater and a non-motivator, <laughs> stop playing church. Now that you've stopped doing all those things, I can use you and I want to talk to you now that you've repented of your ways and your sin. I want to come in and I want to deal with you. So now God is saying restoration. So I know I keep going back and going forth because I want all you get to get a good understanding. So now restoration for the land and for the people. He said, be glad, rejoice. It's time to celebrate. Hey, God going to bless us. Mm. Woo, 
Thank you, Lord. Thank you for letting me be here. Thank you for giving me another day that wasn't promised to me. Thank you for having mercy on me. Thank you for having grace on me. You know, I thank God for that because, listen, some of us mess up and we go really go too far. And uh, God lets us really get it. So now we are in verse 21. He says, Fear not, O land, be glad and rejoice. And to do great things, be not afraid of the yield of the beasts of the field, for the pastures of the wilderness do spring for the for the tree beareth her fruit in the fig tree. Let me put my glasses on. I hate when I do that. Like I can't read, I can't because I can't see. For the vine do yield their strength. Be glad, ye children of Zion, rejoice of the Lord your God, for he has given you former rain moderately, and he will cause to come down for you the rain that the former rain and the latter rain of the first month. He puts a he puts a rain on your field. That's enough to shout on. He puts rain on my field. Woo. What do you mean? I be shouting. Give me a new dance. He gonna rain on your field. He puts a bless you because now you went through something. You can appreciate God for being God. You can appreciate God coming up against the enemy and bring you up out of Egypt. Okay, I'm trying to tell you something. You can appreciate God bringing you across the Red Sea. You can appreciate him showing your enemies that, listen, this one belongs to me. You can appreciate that, that he didn't allow you, the enemies, to overtake you, okay? You can appreciate having a sound mind. You can appreciate having a place to live that God has established for you. You can appreciate those things. That even, even a glass of water. God, I thank you for the glass of water. God, I I thank you for eyes to see and ears to hear. God, I thank you for having a sound mind. God, thank you for these clothes, this house. God, I thank you for my children and my children's children. Because now you've been through something. And God says, now that you've been through something, I'll show you that I'm God. Okay? Because listen, people get this game twisted. You got so many people. And I'm not even trying to be funny because I know some folks. You got so many people that think that they're gods. Let me just drink a glass of water on that. Listen, I would say, well, if you're a God, you know, why don't you do this and do that? But that's their belief and that's their thing. So we're into the restoration. So let's get with this restoration. So, because I'm trying to really, really get to verse 25. And yes, we may be sons of God. I do believe that. So, and we are sons of God. We are his children. And he lets us know that we are his. So now when we get to verse 24, where am I at? Verse 20, look, look at me y'all, I'm using this. I need my glasses on, I can't see. Um, he says again in verse 23, Be ye glad, ye children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God, for he has given you the former rain moderately, and he will cause it to come down the rain from the former rain, in the latter rain first month. And the floor shall be full with wheat. And the fat shall overflow with wine and oil. Verse 25. He's telling us everything he's going to do. We're going to get the rain. He's going to rain on our field. He's he Not only is he going to just rain. But he's going to give us the rain that we lost. When we was going through a desolate place. He's going to rain. He's going to give it all back. He said the former rain he's going to give to us. The latter rain he's going to give to us. We need to be shouting. We need to be thanking God. Because we have made it, we have made it through, and God is going to bless us by trusting and repenting and, and being obedient to the things of God. Now, we are down to verse 25. He says, 24. And the floor shall, and the floor shall be full of wheat, and the fat shall overflow with wine and oil. It's time to celebrate. God said, put your party shoes on. He said, go do something good. He said, oh, fear not, old man. Be glad and rejoice and go do great things. God wants us to go do great things in him. He wants us to show out and show up in him so he can have bragging like right. That one is mine over there. <laughs> I just, so now we're talking about restoration. Restoration, reinstallation, rehabilitation that God is going to do with us, for us, and with us. And here, it talks about how the Israelites are gods. I want you to get a good understanding as to what this is. The Israelites are God's treasure possession, his chosen people. This is his people that he made a covenant with. This is the people that said, yes, Lord, I'll go where you want me to go. Yes, Lord, I'll do what you want me to do. Here, God is saying, 
I'm going to remit any judgment. I'm going to abrogate for my chosen people, for my remnant, ones who are called by my name. And the devil has to get back. To remit means to cancel, to refrain from exacting or inflicting a debt or a punishment. Here God is remitting. He said, listen, this is my people. And I know they did this, but I, I as your God, I'm going to suspend the debt. I'm going to give it back. I'm going to give back everything that was taken. I want to restore. I want to replenish. I want to make better. I want to cancel <coughs> out any of those sins that ye have done. Blessed is a, who, uh, is a man who God improved no sin against. I'm trying to tell you, God is, God is sitting up here. He's showing up and he's showing out. God said, I'm canceling the enemy's assignment. I'm bringing back stuff to its original state and better. I'm setting aside. I'm reinstating. I'm reinstating. I'm putting stuff back. I'm returning it. I'm repelling. I'm coming up against that enemy, that demonic spirit that came in to try to kill, sin, destroy, and take over. I'm reimposing. I'm reinstalling. I'm rehabilitating. I am handing it back, and I'm taking it back from my people. I am rescinding the debt that is old with what sin was attached to. I'm overturning it. I'm overruling it. And I'm overriding it because I am God Ooh, in the mighty name of people. I am their God and they are my people. I am annulling it. It is nullified. And I declare it to be nullified and void. And I am obligate, obligating it. God is saying to rejoice and be glad. I'm getting ready to bless you out of obedience. I'm getting ready to fix this thing in your life. I'm getting ready to do it in the name of Jesus. He didn't say, he didn't say Sarah down the lane. He didn't say John around the corner. He said, I'm getting ready to do this thing. He said, what did he say in verse 21? He said, fear not, O land, be glad and rejoice for the Lord and do great things. This is a restoration for God and for God's people. Listen, for God's people, his chosen people, he wants to come in and do this. Whatever breach was, I'm going to fix it. Where the breach was, where the hurt was, where the pain was, where the misunderstanding is, I'm going to fix it. I'm going to repair it. I'm going to reimburse it. I'm going to revamp it. I'm going to mend the brokenhearted. I'm going to give you beauty for your ashes. This is what God is saying about verse 25. We're going to get into verse 20. Ah, blah, 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 shine. I'm going to come right back to this. Because in verse 25, which is our key verse, let me read it because I got too excited. What does he say? He says, I will restore to you the years that the locusts have eaten and the canker worm and the caterpillar and the palmer worm, my great army, which I sent among you. Now you got to understand about this army because God is saying, this is what he going to do for us. This is how he going to move for us on our behalf because now we've done what God told us to do. Listen, let me, I share, uh, I share a lot of things with a lot of people. But let me just say this unto you, that once you come into a place with God and once you understand ah, that once you come into a place ah, and you get into a place with God and you have repented, God wants to come in and he wants to restore you because now you begin to say, oh yeah, I was wrong. I shouldn't have did this and I shouldn't have did that. I shouldn't have went here. I shouldn't have went there. I shouldn't have been bothered with her. I shouldn't have been bothered with him. I shouldn't have been drinking like that. I shouldn't have been doing dope like that. I shouldn't have been doing these things, trying to cover up my sorrow, trying to cover up my pain, trying to run, trying to be in my flesh, trying to um, co-dependent on other people, whatever it was, whatever your Egypt is, whatever your Egypt was, I should say, because I'm going to call things and not to be as though they were. And I always related to that because when you are in Egypt, you are under a tax master and you do what he tells you to do and you do how he tells you to do because you have no other recourse but to do it. If he tell you to drink all night long, you're going to drink. If he tell you to be a homemonger, you're going to If he tell you to lie, you're going to put that in your side pocket. If he tell you to steal, you're going to put that in your purse. You say, all this comes along with men. All that is part of your baggage. But God says, I'm delivering you on today. I'm restoring you on today because you have come to me with a humble heart. And the men and women of God have come and prayed. The priests and the ministers have prayed for you. And you're rendering your heart, not your garments. And I want to, I want to be a blessing to you. I want to restore you. I want to give you the years that the canker worm, the palmer worm, and the locust have eaten in the caterpillars. So let me explain to you about a canker worm, a palmer worm, and a caterpillar and a locust. All everything they have in common is that they devour. 
They come to devour. Uh, uh, I said devour. They come to devour anything that's not like God. And the, and what happens is what one doesn't get, what the, what the canker worm don't get, the pommel worm get. What the pommel worm don't get, the caterpillar get. What the locusts don't get, the, 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 the um, caterpillar gets, the canker worm gets. So they all work in unison together and they all take after one another. It causes a defolation of a variety of landscapes. Defolation, D-E-F-O-L-I-A-T-I-O-N. Defolation of defolation of a variety of landscapes. They remove leaves, plants, uh, any areas of lands. They go through it like uh, in unison, and, uh, like a squad, like a legion, and they just they just devour everything in their path. Destruction. The locusts come upon the land. The people can't eat. They eat up all the trees. They eat up all the wheat. They have no food. They have nothing to give them life. They in the water. They 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 they, they eat in they least uh, 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 feces. I'm sure everywhere. So you can't even eat it. You can't. They leave the land so barren. It's exposed. It's exposed to the sunlight. It's exposed to the elements of the earth, and it's a it becomes a desolate place. This is what the canker worm, the palmer worm does. This is what the caterpillar does and the locust does. They live in a desolate place, an open place. It's empty. It's, it's the, there's no trees, no shelters for the animals. So you can eat the animals so you can live, get some meat, put some protein in your body. It's unprotected. It has no life. It is a rat. God says, listen, I'm going to come back and restore all this. I'm going to come in and I'm going to, because this army that came upon you, out of your sin, out of your disobedience. They moved as a military tactical unit. You didn't even see it coming because it happens in the spiritual realm first. And once you come from underneath the covering of God, then you open yourself. You're acceptable to those things to come. You accept it for the devil to come kill, sin, destroy, and to use you in that body, in that flesh. And the flesh is enmity against God. And now you just you just caught up. You're like, oh, I'm losing all this over here, but I think I'm trying to live over here. But you basically plan. The devil is playing you against yourself. It means, listen, a military unit means, and you move in unison means a simultaneously performance or an action all at once, all at the same time, all together, all in constant finishing of what one or the other one has started, a devourer of food and vegetation. This is what the canker worm and the pommel worm does. And this is why God says, listen, you have been through enough. You've been through it. You've come. You did the right thing. You've repented. And now I want to restore you. But you have to stay in the place. You have to stay in the place and know that I am God. You know, don't be disobedient because, listen, uh, uh, I'm, I'm not playing no games. I'm a jealous God and I'm not having no other God before me. Stop playing them games. Stop trying to uh, think everything is funny. Stop playing tricks. Stop Stop trying to um, think that you can outwit and outtrick God. God's spirit is everywhere. It was is in our beginning. This place, this planet is billions of years old. He was here in our beginning. Do you understand? His spirit went to the fast, to the deep of the earth. It is down in the earth. And everything that comes out of that earth is a part of God. Every tree, every piece of water, every fish, every bear, every chicken. Thank God for chicken. Every... <laughs> I love some, some chicken greens i'm trying to hear beans uh wheat oh all that stuff comes out diamonds come out of the earth minerals come out of the earth uh uh iron comes out of the earth all this stuff comes out of the earth and god is in it all wood the house you live in came out of the earth i'm trying to tell you everything that was made was not made everything that was made by by uh him i'm trying to think of that scripture um john um Everything was made had not been made without God. It had not been made without him. Without him. That was my favorite scripture. So now I got to go back and read it. So I, I'm here to tell you that everything that you have, your silk came from the animals. You know the silk, um, what did they have those? Uh, um, oh, God just came out of my mind. The caterpillar worm, the silk worms. You know, um, I don't know if they still make it like that. But I'm sure they have another way. But originally that came from those worms, those silkworms. It came from the animal. God has created all things to benefit us as his people, to take care of us. And he said, here, I want to restore you. I want to be a blessing to you. I'm coming up against some caterpillar worms. I already came up against the army. 
that was going to come and devour you. And God is saying, devil, you have to suspend. I mean, you have to stop it. I suspend um, I counsel and I suspend anything that you were going to try to do against my people. I want you to give everything back. I want you to restore them. I want you to replenish them. I'm going to come in as your God and make it better. I want to come in and reimburse you. I want to come in and mend it. I want to come in and bless it. I want you, but I want you to go on and I want you to go on and do good things. He says that in verse 23. He says he wants us to rejoice. He wants us to be happy. And he wants us to go on and do good things. He wants us to do good works in him. Behold, old things have passed away and all things are now becoming new because this is part of what? This is part of restoration. This is part of um, reinstitution. This is part of, of rehabilitation. Now we're being rehabilitated to be able to live into something new that God has given unto us because we've been through something, you know, and God is allowing us to still be here. I don't even know if you've been broken, but I've been homeless before. I've been without before. I went days without eating. I I, I have been broken hearted. I have been you know, hurt. I've been all these things, but I stayed with God through it all. And I wanted to get to know God through it all when I was going through my desolate time in that desolate place. And it's so important that you draw nigh to him, close to him and call on his name and say, well, listen, you know, with me, I said, well, God created this thing, so I want to know who he is. I want to know all about him. I want to know his statutes. I want to know his ways. I don't want to make the same mistakes that I made before. I don't want to be stripped down to the bone out of disobedience because God is coming in and God wants to restore. He wants to refurbish. He wants to mend the broken heart. He wants to give you beauty for your ashes. And, um, he wants to take possession of you know, of, of, of the things that we have lost. He wants to give it back and reinstate it. He wants to redevelop us. And I have said, um, uh, and rehabilitation, but he wants to redevelop us and he has to, we have to understand, behold, old things have passed when all things have become. They always say the scripture, I beseech you therefore, brother, by the mercies of God to present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, for this is your reasonable service. You will be not conformed to this word, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So the mind has to be renewed and we have to render ourselves unto God so he can move and relinquish. Say, listen, God, I, I don't know why I was tripping. I don't know why I was acting like that. You know, this is part of the repentance. This is part of getting right with God. This is part of him reaffirming us with letting us know, go on now. I just spanked you up a little bit. I'm your father. You got a little spanking. Okay, now I want you to go on. I want you to do good things. Don't go back to that old stuff. Don't go back to it like a dog going back to his vomit. Don't go back to those old people. Don't go back to those old ways. Because listen, listen, let me just take a break for a moment. When you go back around somebody in your past, it doesn't mean that they've changed because they 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 wearing their hair different or they got on different clothes or they wearing different makeup or you got on different cologne. They could still be the same person and same individual. Um, but God is saying, I've done something different with you. You say you save, you say you save, right? Then I want you to go on. Um, he says, come out from amongst them and be ye separated, saith the Lord. And this is why, because God wants to reestablish you and redevelop you in a new place and time in your life. When you become a new creature in Christ, you no longer have to go back to those old ways. And oh, if I just take like 5% of it, if I just call Danny one time, if I just call Liz, if I just call and hang up the phone, God said, don't do none of that. Because if you see, if you think it, God said, I got that thing. If it enter into your heart, if it enter into your mind, I got that thing. And I'm telling you, it, unless you get right, he said, listen, you, you got to come to him clean. You got to stay away dirty. He said, clean hands in a pure heart. He said, be ye holy for what I am holy. So listen, when he wants to redevelop you, when he wants to reinstate you, when he wants to restore you, he puts you in a different place with a different mindset. You, uh, For me, I didn't even want that stuff. I didn't want nothing to do with it. I didn't want to see the people that I used to be around. I didn't want to know them. I want to find out what was happening over here. I want to know who God was. I want to know who God people was. I want to know how to sing praises. I want to know how to stay close to God. I thank God that he got me out there where I thank God that I didn't have to pretend to be this person over that house. I didn't have to get drunk to go over here. I had to do this over here. I didn't have to do that over here. I didn't have to dress like that to be here. I can be whoever I want to be in God. And God allowed me to be myself. God allowed, he gave me time when he began to rehabil rehabilitate me. He gave me time to re 
redeveloped me. He did. He gave me time to get to know myself and get to know who I am as a person and as an individual. He gave me time to, I, I, oh, I like to draw. I like to color. I don't like to go to clubs all the time. I don't like to smoke. I don't like to drink. I don't like to do that. I don't like to, I ain't never like to take no pills. I ain't never like to do drugs. Now, I might have had a drink or two. I ain't going to lie. You know, then out there, you know, I, I might have did that. When I was out there in them clubs, them long high nice teas and stuff like that. But I didn't need none of that stuff because God can take you in a place and he can put you in a place on high and that 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 you I, I can't even explain it. You uh, the highest dope in this world can't take you as high as God can get you in him. You get lost in time with him. He gets to talking to you and telling you so much you get to laughing and get to giggling. You be like, Oh my God, oh my God. I didn't know that he get to showing you stuff, he getting to Heal your heart about stuff that happened with your parents, your mom. He tells you why things happen. He tells you um, what's going to come. He tells God will begin when you establish a relationship with God. He begins to redevelop you and restore you and put up new walls. And he begins to um, impart to you his love and understanding. And the spirit comes about you and you begin to laugh and giggle like a little girl. I remember um, uh, there's a uh, sister in our church. She said, when I went home. I had shared with her. I said, you want to go to sleep? She said, I wasn't asleep. I said, she said, I'd just be crying. I'd be crying. I said, tell God you want to go to sleep. And she went home and she believed with all her. She said, God, I just want to go to sleep. And she said, God, next thing she knew, it was a warm blanket that covered her and put her to sleep. And she woke up and she could not believe that God was there for her like that. And now she has even a better relationship with God because she knows that she knows that God is there with her. And he has reinstated her as a person, as a human being, as his child, that he loves her as part of his remnant, as part of being chosen men and women of God. God will come in and do the thing. You don't have to depend on drugs and alcohol or people because you have people that are codependent. You have people that act like they can't do nothing without nobody else telling them what to do. You have people that act like they can't think if somebody don't tell them things. See, you don't have to do that in God because the Spirit of God will lead and guide you into all righteousness for His name's sake. I'm here to tell you, I'm excited about the things of God and I'm excited to tell you about this because it is so important that you as a person, that you as, in this, as an individual, understand when God comes in to develop you or redevelop you, to build you up, to fortify you as a person, as an individual, He gives you clarity, He gives you understanding, He gives you wisdom, He teaches you things, um, He lets you know, listen, I am your God and you are mine and I have set provisions for you. He says, come to me, all ye that are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Come and talk to me about it. Come and tell me about it. Come and tell me about the sorrow and the pain of your past. Come and tell me about the brokenness of your past. Come and tell me about the hurt of your past because I want to come in and reinstate you. I want to come in and repair it. I want to come in and mend it. I want to come in and, and revamp it. I'll give you, like I said, beauty for your asses, ass, ashes. <laughs> ashes y'all ashes listen i want to come and i want to bring you back to the original state that you should be in. not what the world said you was but the original state that i ordained you to be that i predestinated you for the original state who i called you my son and i called you my daughter who i formed in your mother's womb i want to bring you back to that original state that you're supposed to be in. So I come in and nullify what the enemy is trying to come. I come in and void it out. I come in and overturn and overrule what the enemy is trying to come up against you with. I come in and say, listen, I'm going to reinstate my people. I'm going to rehabilitate them and because they have turned back to that and the devil has to get back and I cancel the assignment of the enemy and I'm going to raise them up again, redevelop them into the person that I want them to be, which I originally called for them to be, now that they recognize me as their God and they are my people. And he puts it back better than it was. It takes time. You take each day at a time. It is a process when you go through the desolate time or desolate place, when you're coming up out of Egypt, when you don't know which way to go, when you don't know where to turn, I'll tell you now, turn to God, talk to him all about it. You ain't got to pick up that phone and talk to nobody. You get in a place, you get in a place, put you, get in your, I don't care if you got to take a shower, I don't care if you got to get in your car, I don't care if you got to go to the bathroom, close the door, I don't care if you got to go in your room, get into a place where you can meditate and have a clear mind and pray and say, God, it is me standing in the need of prayer. You said that you was going to redevelop me, that you was going to reinstate me, that you were going to give me the years that the pommel worm, the canker worm, the locust, and the, uh, it was the pommel worm, the canker worm, and the locust came in and ate and took in the caterpillar took from me. 
you said that you're going to bring me up to a code, a standard in you, oh God, that no one can point a finger at me. No one can come in with rules and regulations. You freed me from the task message. You have fortified me as a person and as an individual. Everything is up to code in me, oh God. I want it to be. I want it to be strong and mighty in you, oh God, in the name of Jesus. You've given me this land. Teach me how to live in this land. Teach me how to be in this place. This is what you need to be saying because he said he want us to be happy. He want us to be glad. He want us to do good things. And you can turn to God and say, listen, I want to do good things. I want to be happy. I want to do what you told me, uh, uh, what you called me to be. I want to be this person that you have come in and rehabilitated and, and, and made strong and fortified. But teach me your ways. Show me your ways. I got you. have to go through the process. Write it down. Take a picture of it. Um, Put it, get a pen, get a pencil, paper, write it down. I always tell people this all the time. Get you a little book. Put it in because God will begin to tell you so much and show you so much you won't remember. It is so important. So you can go back on it and you can read it. And he says, oh, he, oh, God did reestablish himself with me. Because the enemy is not going to stop. This is when he's going to use people, use things to try to come up against you. This is when he's going to try to bombard you. But the word of God said, resist the enemy and he shall flee. Not you that he shall feed because God is telling you now that you've repented, now that you've come to me, now this is restoration time. It's time to restore you. It's time to redevelop you. It's time to put you together. It's time to the provisions that I have for you. It's time for you to get those things, but you got to come to me and listen and let me give them to you. Let me give you instructions through your obedience. Obedience is better than sacrifice. I want you to be, I want you to receive what is rightfully yours. Listen, I'm telling you because I've been through the process. I'm going through the process. Um, the higher the level, the bigger the devil. I still come up against things. I still say, God, you God, you established me here. God, you put me here. What do you want me to do? How do you want me to do it? I mean, do I need to look to the left? Do I need to look to the right? I'm going to say it because I've been hearing this since I was a little girl. But it is true. Acknowledge me in all thy ways and I shall direct your path. Let me give you an example. I'm going to, he says, listen, this is what it means when God says um, about uh, the repeal or re remit for you. I'm going to court for you to repeal the judgment. I'm going against the accusations of the people that made them near and far to come up against you, to try to bind you, to try to tie you, to lie on you, to try to ruin your name, to try to take your businesses from you, try to take your finances, trying to come up against your kids. God said, I'm coming in. And I'm going to make, I'm coming up against the accusations. I'm coming up against the lies. I'm, come on, y'all. I know I'm happy about it. I'm coming up against the people that made them near and far. So you, you can't run and hide from God, okay? God is saying the battle is not yours, that it is mine, and it is the Lord's. Come on, somebody. The very things that God sent among, the very things God sent among you and allowed you to become because of your sin. The th See, these things that happen, these negative things that happen is because we were out of a place with God and God wants to reestablish us. So this is what he's saying unto this. Once you turn back and repent uh, um, and repent to God, that great supernatural army that he was going to send, you can read about it in 2 Thessalonians 1, 7 through 10. He talks about that in the Armageddon. That army, that's that army that come up against sin. This army was coming up against us, and we don't want this to happen because now God says, listen, now that you've repented, now that you've reestablished yourself with me, I want you to go what? Rejoice, have fun. I'm going to give you, I'm going to cover your fields with wheat uh, and wine and oil. We having a party. We having a good time. We celebrating because now you're back in the place, and God is saying, listen, I have come in and obligated the sins for my people I revolted, I broke it, I overturned it, I overruled it, invalidated it, I, I done away with it, I annulled it, I counseled it, I discontinued it. All claims, all accusations, judgment on my people is null and void. It is done. It is over with. As uh, a remission of your sins, I will forgive you and rebuild you. I will be your God and you shall be my people again. Matthew 26 and 28. God is so good. I'm so excited. I'm saving this last thing. I'm almost done. I can't believe, I can't believe it. I'm almost done. God is good. He's worthy to be praised. I've been reading all day. I'm just making sure look through these papers. There's nothing else that I need to say to you about restoration because now, as far as I'm concerned, once you went through this, you have been restored. You have been, um, once you went to God and rented your heart, not your garments, 
once you turn to God, once we assembled ourselves, once the priests and the ministers interceded and prayed, once the prayer words came forth and interceded for our behalf, and we did what God told us to do, and he said, I'm going to restore you, I'm going to, uh, I want you to be happy, don't worry about the enemies that was going to come, I'm going to send your enemies a totally different way, they won't even see you, they're going to be way in China somewhere, and if you in China saying this, they're going to be way out there in the United States somewhere, I'm not going to allow your enemy, these enemies to come and devour you, to eat you, to overtake you. Tell yourself that God said when the enemy comes in the flood, like a flood, God said He will, the Spirit of God would raise up a, flood, a, a standard against him. When the enemy comes in to overtake you, God said that He will raise up a standard against that demonic spirit, against them devils. Say, God, you said in your word, you use the prophet to say, you ain't going to let none of this happen to me. You use the prophet, you said, you, you obligate, A-B-R-O-G-A-T-E, obligate for my people. He said, I'm coming in to revoke, I'm coming in to re, um, repeal the verdict. I'm coming in to overturn the verdict. I'm coming over to override, overrule the verdict. I'm coming over here to override the verdict. I'm coming here to do away with the verdict that the, the enemy tried to do, to try to inflict upon you because of sin. I'm coming in to invalidate that ruling. I'm coming in, counseling void, null and void. It is discontinued. All claims against you, all accusations, all judgment is out the window. It is gone. It is null and void, and I'm done, and I'm finished with you. Who the Son has set free is free indeed. If I was you, I would be rejoicing in the Lord, thanking the Lord for reconciliation, thanking the Lord for reconditioning you, thanking the Lord for rehabilitation, thanking the Lord for overhauling what the devil was trying to do and what God says I'm going to do. I'm going to fix this thing. If I was you, I would believe God. I'd stop the tape and say, wait a minute, you going to fix this thing for me? You going to show up on my behalf? Ah, blah, 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 blah. Yes, I'm going to move for you. I'm going to show up and show out for your behalf. I'm reconditioning that mind. Behold, old things have passed away and God says all things have become new. You mean to tell me that now that I have rendered my heart and not my garments, you going to show out for little old me? You love me enough. You mean all that stuff that I lost, all that stuff. He says, I'm going to give it back to you and it's going to be better. I'm going to give it back and it's going to be stronger. I'm going to give it back to you. It's going to be more love there. I'm going to give it back to you. You're going to be strengthened by the spirit of God. God is good. He's reinstating. He's giving back. He's restored. He's replenishing. Get this. Catch on to this. I keep going back over. He's reimposing. He's reinstalling. He's reestablishing. He's giving back. He's handing back. He's taking back from the enemy to give unto you that the years of the canker worm and the palmer worm have eaten. God is good. He's worthy to be praised. I can't believe that I'm done with this, but I'm just about done. Here, Isaiah. God told me to finish with this. Isaiah 9 and 6. For God, I thank you. You're so awesome. God, I thank you. You're so awesome. I just have to stop and say it right there. Listen. To obligate is a legal word, and the legal word, because some people, uh, uh, the, the, the enemy like to use legalities against us. We're no longer under the law, but there's a courtroom in heaven, and he likes to use legalities against us in the courtroom in heaven. And God says, I'm going to obligate, A-B-R-O-G-A-T-E, look up the word, for my people. That means to, re to revoke to repeal, to overturn, to overrule, to override in the legalities in heaven. God is doing this for us to invalidate, to void, to discontinue all claims and accusations and judgment against God's people. Because remember, the adversary, the devil, is the one that comes up against God's people. He is an accuser of the brethren. So because he accuses us on every little thing, he don't miss nothing, okay? God, they did this. God, they did that. God, he hit me. God, he touched me when I carried my back. You know how little kids do. That's how the enemy does in his hips. So God says, I got to fight this in, in heaven with legalities. Thank God for Jesus. That Jesus, ah, blah, 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 shot. Thank God for Jesus. That, ah, blah, 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 shot. Thank God for the Lord. Ooh, ooh, thank God that he has power and authority over every name and every name that has not been named. Thank God that God, thank God for him. Thank God for, oh, thank God for Jesus. The government is upon his shoulders. Here in Isaiah 9, it says, For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulders, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, and Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Christ is our humanity on this earth. Christ is our love. Christ is our life. Christ is our way through. Christ is, Christ is our way out. 
Christ is our healer. He is our deliverer. He is water and dry places. He is the Lamb of God. God said he's going to allow it to rain, the former rain, the latter rain upon you. You have been reestablished. God has came in and um, rehabilitated you. God has raised you up. God has set you on dry land. Now, God wants you to go out there and he wants you to do great things. We made it through, you guys. This is the end and how great. It's not how you start off, baby, but it's how you end this thing. And we are ending on a good note because God said he's going to give back the years that the canker worm, the palmer worm, the caterpillar, the locusts have eaten. God says, I'm going to come in and reestablish, redevelop, rehabilitate, rebuild. I'm going to come in and exactly what I purpose you to be in the beginning. I'm going to come in. I'm going to show you and I'm going to teach you in this new land. Only thing you have to do is say, listen, God, I thank you. Thank you for turning things back. Thank you for reinstalling me. Thank you for rehabilitating me. Thank you for bringing me back. Thank you for reinst for reinstituting me in this life, in this world. Thank you for revamping me. Thank you for the overhaul, oh God. Thank you for the, what, what the devil was trying to do that you came in and put in shed, not this one you own, that this one belongs to me. Thank you for suspending the work of the enemy. Thank you for sending my enemies a total other way. Thank you, oh God, for reestablishing me. Thank you, oh God. Thank you for allowing, uh, allowing me to look towards something. Thank you for allowing me to learn. Thank you for allowing me to, to have a chance to learn. Thank you for calling me by my name. Thank you for waking me up this morning. Whenever you see this, tell somebody, say, listen, God said, at the end of this, God said, he going to do some great things. Only thing he called us to do, once repent, what did he tell you to do? He said, go out there, rejoice, and do good things. God is good. He's worthy to be praised. I thank God for the redeveloping. I thank God for putting back things better than the original state that it was in. I thank God for bringing us up to code. I thank God for the remission of our sins. I thank God. You know, I wanted to to read that to you. I just can't find it. Oh, yes, I guess I can. I can find it, but I'm not going to read it because I'm going to save that to next time. Next time, we'll be talking about the remission of our sins. And really, what does that mean? The, as Because now that we've repented and we've been restored and we're in a place of restoration because God is rebuilding us again, because God is restoring us again, because God is putting us back in a place with him with a sound mind and God is healing our heart. God is delivering us. God is moving by his spirit because we're welcoming him and we're going to be obedient and we're going to strive daily to be Christ-like. We're going to seek him out uh, early while he may be found. Um, I thank God for him. I thank God for you. May God bless you. May God cover you. All the ones under the sound of my voice in the name of Jesus, may he give you clarity. May he give you understanding. May he give you wisdom. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for showing up and thank you for showing out. And I thank God for reestablishing you, reconfirming you, showing up for you. This is a newness for you. This is a new way for you. This is a new life for you. Redeveloping you, bringing you to a point of understanding, giving you a point of wisdom. I thank God for you being willing to seek him. I thank God for the remission of your sins. I thank God for the forgiveness. I thank God for canceling out those debts. I thank God for giving back, suspending uh, the end, the enemy's instructions. I thank God for canceling out what the enemy was assignment. I thank God for setting those things aside. I thank for repealing. I thank for God for reimposing his blessing, reinstalling his love. I thank God for return, allowing us to return back to him and bring him back to us in our original state that he intended for us to be in and allowing us to walk in that. I thank God for coming, being debt free. I thank God for overturning what was against us. I thank God for overruling and overriding what the enemy tried to bring up against us up, up there in heaven. I, I mean, up there in the legalities of heaven. I thank God for annulling and nullifying those deeds of the enemy that he declared that these things shall be notified. He obligated for his people, which is us. I'm saying it again because I want you to get this thing. I think God said, rejoice and be glad. I'm getting ready to bless you out of obedience. He said, rejoice and be glad. I'm getting ready to bless you out of obedience. I'm out of obedience. I'm getting ready to fix this thing. Fix it, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Whatever the breach was, God said, I'm going to fix it. I'm going to heal it. I'm going to repair it. I'm going to revamp it. I'm going to mend it. I'm going to heal the brokenhearted and a contrite spirit I would no wise despise. And I'm going to give you beauty for your answers. May God bless you. May God keep you. 
Until next time, what a good ending to a great story.